All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy to have you all here. I'm Keisha Rogers, member of the LaRouche Tech Policy Committee, and I have, we're in the middle of an extraordinary, life-changing, world-transforming new paradigm that we have to make sure that the American people truly understand that this is a mankind diverging right now or, or moving toward a total renaissance. And the key thing is we have to, what we just experienced in this past week is quite extraordinary. And I'm gonna go through some of these developments. I think I wanna title my discussion for day, today, the growth paradigm for mankind, the emergence of the growth paradigm for mankind. Now, what I'd like to start with is uh, first of all, to situate where we are in the, the fight that is emerging of the new paradigm for mankind versus the end of an era, the end of the British Empire. And this is exactly what has to once and for all be accomplished, that we are in the fight of our lives at this very moment. And I'll go through some of those developments, but first, we should situate what's going on with the recent conference that just took place in Europe that the Schiller Institute held in in Europe in a, a place near Frankfurt called Watsulen. And there were nearly 200 guests there, attendees there, who heard speakers from Europe, China, United States, Africa, the Middle East, all demonstrating what is happening with the rapid emergence of a new paradigm of growth and development as is seen with the Belt and Road Initiative, which has been Lyndon, Lyndon and Helga LaRouche's vision for the past four decades now. And this was a phenomenal conference that Mrs. LaRouche and Mr. LaRouche uh, both took part in. I want to give a quick, take a quote from this conference. First of all, people should know that it was very fitting, the title of it, called Fulfilling the Dream of Mankind. And what Mrs. LaRouche characterized in this conference as a beautiful conception of what is the future of mankind that we must seek to bring about. And you see what's happening right now with developments around the Belt and Road are flourishing at a rapid pace. And it's happening at such a rapid pace right now that China is, is continuing to lead the world because of their commitment to the vision uh, that Lynn and Helga laid out, but more importantly, the commitment to a true classical renaissance for mankind. And throughout my discussion today, what I like to do is I want to situate that in the decades long fight and unique qualifications of Lyndon LaRouche as a leading American statesman, physical economist, and why this vision as LaRouche has laid out for a, a new paradigm for mankind has been based on what he has made breakthroughs and discoveries unlike any other economist on the planet on the question of the science of physical economy uh, based on the idea of the advancement of the creative powers of mankind that that is what economics starts with and so i think that was very much demonstrated in this very beautiful remark by helga during the conference where she said if we revive the classical culture of all nations and enter a beautiful dialogue among them, mankind will experience a new renaissance and unleash an enormous creativity of the human species like never before. Now, we've clearly in, in many occasions been discussing the role of the Chinese in fulfilling that vision with what happened with President Xi Jinping uh, announcing the role of China in embarking and leading the global world initiative of the Belt and Road Initiative around this harmonic 
uni unifying of mankind, uh, what he calls a community of shared future for mankind. And this is really what is now underway. And just in a recent discussion, uh, in a recent presentation by the president of China, people have seen uh, with, with the commitment to the Belt and Road since 2014 by Xi Jinping, uh, the president of China, this has been completely unstoppable from what has emerged in the development and cooperation in China, in Europe, in South America, in Africa, very prominently in Africa, throughout Southwest Asia. And what Xi Jinping uh, referenced and developed in a dialogue with world political parties uh, at a CPC uh, dialogue that just happened just yesterday, he said, he delivered a very beautiful address, and this was a part of, this is on the second day of a four-day CPC dialogue with the world political parties. He says, I am delighted to see that the friendly cooperation between China and other countries is increasingly expanding, and the concept of the community with the shared future for mankind is gaining support and endorsement from the increasing number of people. She told the more than 600 representatives from nearly 300 political parties from 120 countries. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiative said is the practice or the action of the concept of a shared future and has become a huge cooperation platform for countries to realize their common development, for their, to realize their common development. So now, this is a vision that truly signifies who we are as a species, as a as a people created in the image of a creator to actually carry out the continued process of creation on the planet. And it's a beautiful idea that right now is actually being, being targeted and uh, disrupted to be destroyed. Because as the key thing about the role of Lyndon LaRouche and what he has done is that he has never back down on recognizing that there is an anti-growth, anti-creativity in the apparatus that is very clearly uh, to be defined and that the oligarchical system of, of anti-human of anti -human development is has been the basis of the fight that Lyndon LaRouche has been waging, that he has committed himself to putting an end to once and for all. And I think it's very clear right now that we are seeing the emergence of a true growth paradigm. Look at what China has done to lift over 700 people out of poverty in the past, in the past 30, huh? Seven, 700, yes, million, I've got that. 700 million, yes, uh, out of poverty in the past 30 years, uh, the rapid pace of growth and development in the past five years under the president of Xi Jinping, which is very beautifully laid out in his speech and to the, to the con Congress, uh, the Communist Party Congress in China just a few weeks ago. So now this is what we're up against and what's going on right now. And I'm gonna go through this briefly. And many of you uh, may have just received a, uh, the latest email that came out from LaRouche Pat and also uh, a leaflet that is a follow-up to the report that we put out exposing why this cancer right now couldn't be more important for the survival of mankind. And we're now in a mobilization 
a rapid mass pace, fast paced mobilization to get over 10,000, 20,000 more of these campus printed. They've gone out uh, rapidly across the country, in around Trump Towers, throughout New York, throughout Texas, and across the country. That what we expose in terms of the criminal apparatus of Robert Mueller, Mueller, however you want to say his name, and this amoral legal assassin who has committed to very much carrying out the purpose of the British Empire, which is to destroy this principle of a common destiny, common future, the creative powers, a growth paradigm for mankind. Because what has been the mission of Mueller and his ink on behalf of the British Empire? Well, you see this uh, by if there was one person that they said they had to take down, to destroy, and to stop, it was Lyndon LaRouche. But they haven't been successful, and up until this point, for the past several decades, because the commitment to truth is always going to prevail. And today, just in the context of what we just did with this conference in uh, Batsoda, in, in in Frankfurt area, I want to make this very clear what we just accomplished here. Because you know, some people say, "Oh, the Schiller Institute, they do these beautiful conferences, and they, you know, have nice classical music, and um, it's, you know, it's really nice idea." But it's a utopian dream. That's what some people say, oh, it's never going to be accomplished. But the key thing right now is it's actually being realized, it's being accomplished. And Lyndon LaRouche's vision is something that people have to realize this is a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle to once and for all put an end to the British imperial policies uh, that have been out to destroy the progress of mankind. And so what we just put forth is that people know that Barbara Boyd, uh, collaborator, uh, long-term activist uh, with Lyndon LaRouche and uh, works very closely with Mr. LaRouche in our organization, uh, in our legal team and so forth, uh, wrote, the, wrote the report exposing the crimes of Robert Mueller and his attacks on LaRouche and the whole targeting and who run against the president and particularly the fact that Robert Mueller was the uh, apparatus pushing the cover up of 9-11. Now, and people who haven't read this report, I'm not giving a class on going through this report, I think the key thing is you, you have to read this. If you have been around this movement, watching this movement, if you want to understand what is truly at stake right now and what the battle is we're in, then you have to look at this. Um, so I'm going to make a plug here that not only should people read this, but if you're watching, you should contribute, go online right now, make a contribution to uh, our political organization to make sure that we can continue to print out this dossier. Um, and those in the room here, I encourage you, uh, as I'm developing this, think about what your role is going to be to make sure that we can escalate on this campaign. So um, the follow-up to this report that was just released by Helga, just in terms of a recent statement, excuse me, by Barbara Boyd in a recent statement, is uh, where we stand, the Rushpak statement on Flynn Plea. And I'm not going to go through um, too many details on this, but people should read it, and the expert on it is Barbara uh, and her, what she's doing with our uh, legal and investigative team here. But I think it's very clear right now that the recent escalation of the coup and the criminal activity by Robert Mueller and his team uh, show is very clear that this must be defeated immediately. That the only option on the table at this present time is to bring the United States to free the president, to bring the United States once and for all fully into the emerging new paradigm. That means joining with the Belt and Road Initiative. Now, I'm just gonna, I am gonna say a few things about this escalated coup 
plot in operation against the President of the United States, which is really escalating after what, after the extraordinary trip that happened uh, just a few weeks ago uh, with President Trump going to Asia. And again, we're not seeing one hit bit, snippet, inkling, nothing of the fact that the President just went to Asia. There was uh, billions of dollars in trade deals, memorandums of understanding that were signed. What, I mean, what are we hearing? Well, we're hearing a bunch of, uh, first of all, yes, about working all over the place. Um, and I mean, you think that these Congress members had some guts and, you know, they actually had some moral values, but that's a, that's another subject. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's another subject here. I mean, the key thing though is, you know, we, we're looking at the fact you, you just take what just happened with uh, the plea agreement, I guess you want to call it, with, with Michael Flynn. Uh, and just one second here. So uh, what is this all about? Well, Barbara Boyd uh, and our organization has laid, laid out the facts very clearly here. And it's also uh, picked up and uh, communicated also in a recent article that was released in Consortium News. Um, I can find, here we go, find the article. Um, the Consortium News says the, the scalp taking of General Flynn. Um, now, the reality of what's happening and what happened with this is that uh, the Flynn, uh, General Flynn and his admitting to lying to the FBI is not the issue at hand. The issue at hand right now is that this is a way for them, uh, because of the, the complete freak out, for them to try to cover their rears because the reality is everything is now coming out into the open in terms of the British role in this whole apparatus of the coup against the president. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that Flynn didn't commit any crime. That's been shown. Um, you know, there's first the crime that the FBI sees is, well, if you, it's not about lying to the FBI. Hell, they lie to everybody. But it's about, it's about the fact that the crime is, we don't like your policy. If you're promoting economic growth, Hey, if you're promoting development of nuclear power plants throughout the Middle East, if you're promoting ending the regime change, uh, war policy, the uh, policy of defending and, and, and continuing to arm ISIS, then you're a threat. That's a crime. It's a crime to work and to talk with Russia, according to those apparatus around Mueller and the ones who rec who recognize right now that their game is up, it's over. This empire is is defeated. The writing on the wall is like Belgian's piece is there, and it is the Belgian Road Initiative, the new paradigm, the emergence of the economic development that's rapidly taking off right now. So, you know, as uh, Barbara pointed out here. What the Mueller's counterpunch is to the growing momentum from one, the House Intelligence Committee, and the courts to fulfilly, uh, fully reveal the British hand in this coup. That's what it is. Now, remember again, as you were pointing out, that uh, when Flynn was the CIA director under President Obama, when he got fired because he put Obama in his place and he went after. The whole war policy and the uh, policy of the uh, regime change and, and so forth, and was was then an immediate target. So, what from from then on, because of the uh, once the Obama administration led the NSA operation on the unmasking of, of Flynn and after he was 
illegally wiretapped um, in a private discussion he was having having prior to him being um, uh, in the president President Trump cabinet uh, with Kislyak, uh, a Russian Russian official. So we can go through the details, but I think the key thing is clear right now, which is the fact that this is the end of this empire's uh, criminal coup plot against the, the president. Uh, it's been exposed from the VIPS memorandum, exposing the lies around the Russiagate fraud to, um, you know, the fact that, yeah, they, they've gotten Flynn to agree to a plea bar bargain based on the fact that this was a, a witch hunt, a operation uh, to destroy him. You know, somebody come out for your son and your family and uh, says you're going to go to prison for, for life and so forth. But the key thing now is the only thing that he and everyone else has to do who recognizes that this is a crime against humanity is to fight like hell. And that means to say, look, we're not going to give in and allow for this empire to uh, get away with this. And I think that that's the message that was put in the article in Consortium uh, News uh, today by uh, Perry, Robert Perry. And uh, Robert Perry, his, his message says, Russiagate enthusiasts are thrilled over the guilty plea of President Trump's former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn for lying to the FBI about inauguration conversations with the with the Russian ambassador. But the case should alarm true civil uh, civil libertarians. Yes, um, says what is arguably most disturbing about this case is that the then National Security Advisor Flynn was pushed into the perjury trap by Obama administration holdovers at the Justice Department who concocted an unorthodox legal rationale for subjecting Flynn and FBI to an FBI interrogation four days after he took office testifying Flynn's recollection of the conversation while the FBI agent had transcripts of the calls intercepted by the National Security Agency. And he just goes on about how this, this was totally illegal. It's been illegal that the cover-up or excuse me, that um, Mueller has been operating and working with Comey, the FBI director, has been illegal, the uh, rapid pace of the leaks coming out of Mueller. So again, as we've said, and many people, this guy has to be stopped, has to be brought down. Um, he is nothing more than a criminal. So, and we are in the position to do that right now. So that's, I think, let me click in here. So that's where I want to leave that, but um, Mike, why don't you go ahead and put the, yes. So as a, I want to, first of all, in the, uh, reference to this conference that just took place, um, point out something very important in terms of a message that was sent to the conference, um, which we're going to play a little bit later. Um, I'm going to uh, put it in the middle of the discussion, the presentation, but we'll I'll actually have a link, was from our collaborators in Yemen. And um, the our collaborators in Yemen have been fully engaged in 
the fight to fight uh, the, the genocide, war policy, the bombing, and the, the attacks uh, that are going on that have been a product of the British Saudi-led operations that have been defended by many people in our government, in the U.S. Congress, and so forth. And the most beautiful thing is that when you see this video later, and I'm bringing this up because what just happened was that our leader of uh, of the Yemeni movement, Yemeni, he founded the Yemeni Youth Council, committed to the ideas of bringing Yemen into the Belt and Road, New Silk Road Initiative. Um, the, in Yemen, they actually purchased, I believe it was close to a thousand copies of these reports to be released. Uh, they were actually in, this report has been transcribed into Arabic as well as Chinese. Um, and their commission, their youth council, many members of the uh, Yemeni governmental layers, economic layers, has been studying intently the economic discoveries and policies of Lyndon LaRouche, uh, including his five, four laws for economic recovery, uh, has been studying Lyndon LaRouche's uh, discoveries in the science of physical economy. And this was the beautiful video that was sent was a reflection of how that country is being transformed in, in with Glenn's ideas. And what is happening is that they're taking and empowering people in the middle of a devastating uh, war, in the middle of people all around being bombed and, and, and killed and starvation going on and children who are being left with no future and saying we're going to commit to a future and the future lies in the power of ideas exemplified by Lyndon LaRouche. And so what just happened uh, tragically is that um, fortunately our friend in Yemen, Mr. Fouad Bufari, it was, uh, uh, fortunately he was not harmed, but his home, uh, this is a 40 year old young man who's the uh, leader of our Yemeni movement, um, was completely com committed to the ideas of Lenin Uh His home was targeted by an RPG, uh, by a uh, wet bomb in, in Yemen. Uh, no one was hurt. It was windows and various things were blown out. But this is, this is the life of what people are facing right now. Now, in, in the reality is we should take a moment to reflect on how comfortable, who comfortable Americans are. That's going on over there. But, or that's not us. Or that's some different culture, different religion, different people. What do I care? That's evil. And I think that the key thing right now is that we have to actually change our identity as mankind committed to what Helga and Xi Jinping, the president of China, and Lin's commitment to the common destiny, common future, uh, and the shared principle of mankind, that we all breathe and the same air. We all have the same needs. We all need, have the same urging of discovery and creativity. And so, during the conference, um, in the context of the of the message that was sent, a very beautiful message from our colleagues in Yemen, who are continuing to fight, um, there was a a resolution that was adopted, and uh, it's very short. I want to read it to you uh, because I think we have to make the commitment that here in the United States that we're going to fulfill this this resolution. It's called the end of the war and humanitarian crisis in Yemen. <clears throat> says, given the documented fact that the war on Yemen waged by the Saudi-led coalition since March 2015 on Yemen 
has caused an unprecedented humanitarian crisis in the country as a result of the bombardment of the country's infrastructure and the total blockade imposed by air, land, and sea. The attendees of the November 25, 26, 2017 Schiller Institute International Conference in Van Soten, Germany, called for, one, an immediate ceasefire by all parties, two, the lifting of the blockades imposed on the country, especially the port of Odita Port and the Sanaa International Airport, allowing an immediate humanitarian aid. Three, the return to the national consolidation, uh, the return to the national reconciliation, thank you, uh, process and dialogue that was underway but was interrupted by the war. Um, and it says the purpose of such negotiations is to find a political solution to the crisis in Yemen. Also, number four is assist Yemen in a rapid and large scale reconstruction process focused on infrastructure projects to regain the livelihood of the nation and the integration of Yemen into a Belt and Road Initiative. So we have to stop this genocide policy. We have to stop the killing. We have to stop the uh, starvation, the war policy. And this message that and this resolution adopted at our conference in Germany is absolutely key. So um, as we can see here, uh, just we put together just a map here so you can see um, where Yemen is. Uh, Saudi Arabia. And this is where you had the ongoing bombing campaign. This is Sanaa here uh, coming from Saudi. And I mean, this, this policy has to, has to be defeated. And the way to defeat it is to join the United States with Russia, China, and the Russia, China, and, and and the many other countries around the world, particularly the United States, Russia, and China, are to defeat this uh, defeat this war apparatus once and for all. So, and as I said, we're going to show the video a little bit later on. Now, So, um, put up, Lynn, the quote. Okay. So I want to go to just situating some of the emerging developments of growth happening around the planet as a result of the Belt and Road. And there's so many that I'm not going to be able to go through them all today, but I think it's important to, to situate it from the standpoint of, we're not just talking about various infrastructure projects popping up around the world, but there's a, a true commitment to the creative advancement of mankind, which has been very much uh, understood by what China has been committed to, what they've been doing, um, as they've studied the ideas of what Lyndon LaRouche understands as the true American system of political economy, as the true emergence of a science of physical economy. And um, I wanted to just read these and, and kind of lead a discussion on these two very critical points in the context of the, the principles of Lyndon LaRouche's discovery and the understanding of uh, the unique science of, of physical economy. So LaRouche has been making breakthroughs in the area of economics and economic forecasting since the 1950s. And his economic forecast has been based on a standard that is unmatchable to any other standard of, of physical, of, of economics uh, 
really around the planet, particularly in the West, um, which the Western the transatlantic economic policies that dominated our education system has been nothing more than uh, market values and monetary standards and various things of, of that nature. But this is what LaRouche focuses on two following axiomatic, as he called it, uh, specifications of, of growth and of his economic forecasting, uh, which you can see it says, one, the sole source of increase of the human species potential relative population density per capita and per square kilometer of the Earth's surface is anti-entropic changes in the physical characteristics of the outcome of human social behavior changes which depend upon continued scientific and technological progress. And secondly, it says, those discoveries of principles of artistic composition, which are prompted by the defining function of metaphor in classical modes, in poetry, tragedy, music, and plastic art forms, have an even higher degree of significance at significance than discoveries of physical principles. Very, uh, very challenging or something to think about there because it, it really makes the point right now of what is the underlying principle of the Belt and Road Initiative, the, the New Silk Road. And it's you, one of the things that's really fully developed uh, on many occasions in the the speech of of the President Xi Jinping as a model, uh, taking from the model of of Linda LaRouche and his economic science is the commitment to culture. And you know, uplifting people out of poverty, the increases in scientific and technological progress, commitment by China right now to fulfill the vision of of increasing mankind's power over the solar system, uh, what we're doing in, in space exploration, how they're completely taking off right now and um, their development of uh, a rapid pace growing space program. But also what you're seeing in terms of uh, the development of putting mankind at the center of economic growth. And this was a part of the discussion that's been ongoing the people have been watching our um, watching our economics series and classes. One thing that's very clear about the unique nature of Linda Marouche's concept of economic science is that money is not at the center of growth. Um, market values, really, infrastructure projects is not at the center of growth, but it's the creative power of man. Because in order to actually, for these projects, which we're seeing emerging at a rapid pace, um, you know, to actually have a, to be able to be fulfilled, they don't just build and create themselves, their ideas in the minds of man, of the, in the minds of human beings that actually are put into action, ideas that flourish. That's what the Belt and Road Initiative is. It was once an idea uh, that is now fully being realized. And you know, I'll give you an example, which is, uh, why don't we go to the uh, Macau, Helga. I'll come back to that in a minute. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, so uh, just so people know, uh, we just got an exciting report today that uh, following the conference in Germany, uh, the Schiller Institute Conference, Helga LaRouche uh, traveled to China and she had a chance to visit uh, a beautiful masterpiece uh, bridge that uh, has been in the works since 20, 2019, not, excuse me, since 2019, since it's been in the works since 2009. And uh, it's called the Hong Kong. Uh, Zhuhai Macau Bridge. And 
it this bridge is a um, uh, just a masterpiece of the engineering, economic, creative skills of mankind that, I mean, I'll give you a couple of the stats here. Uh, she had a chance to, to travel uh, to certain distances across this bridge and she just came back uh, from her travels, um, uh, speaking at various conferences or events there. But when she was describing how her experience in actually going across this bridge, she said it was one of ah, I, I don't even know how she described it. It was, she was just totally blown away what she saw. I mean, this is one of the tallest, largest bridges in the world that was uh, basically uh, started to be constructed in 2009, and they're now at the final stages of uh, final stages uh, were starting to be completed around July of. 2017 of this year and uh, just to kind of give you a sense you have uh, you have a, a complex sea crossing project which it from going from connecting it's going to connect the uh, bridges and tunnelways spanning from Xinjiang uh, to Hong Kong from Hong Kong to Macau to uh, Wuhan, which is we have Hong Kong here, Macau, Wuhan. Uh, we have a, a bridge process that goes across this whole expansion here. Uh, yeah, across the whole ocean, the expansion of it. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, actually, the bridge itself, the main bridge connection is 20, 22.9 kilometers. Um, it's 14, 14.2 miles long and includes three cable stay spans between 280 uh, and 460 meters, 920 and 1,510 1, feet, 1,510 feet. Uh, the, Last, the last bridge towers were erect, uh, erected in June of 2016. And you have, so this, the straight part of the bridge, the elements there are about 4,860 meters long. Uh, this is the straight section that the undersea tunnel uh, was installed in the 20, in Ju July of 2016. So, I mean, the point is, it took them eight years to build this. Elga was making the reference that, you know, in Europe, you have projects that people are working on that take several decades or more, and they never really get completed. And I was thinking, you know, travel in Houston, go over there to uh, 290 Highway in Texas here, and you know, they've been working on that for a couple of decades. And it's nothing compared to the magnitude of engineering. I mean, because when a nation is committed to growth and development, I mean, they've put, so, so many people commit themselves to this. You know, you got hundreds, thousands of people working on these projects to get them finished. Here, you know, in various other places, you might have, you know, five, <laughs> five people trying to, you know, dig a tractor and dig some dirt and try to put the project up. But, I mean, the key thing right now is you have miracle masterpieces that are emerging, and we're right in the center of this. I mean, the fact that Helga uh, had the opportunity to go and visit the aftermath of this, this uh, very beautiful conference that we just held, uh, which people, as she, people know, she's been named as the Silk Road Lady. People know that the vision of Belt and Road is what has been the commitment, the vision of Lynn and Helga for many decades. So, um, somebody want to say something? Well, of course, you mostly tell specific words, but that kind of thing that you're talking about, and I was like a project. It takes more fun to try, three months. Three months? What? Three months. Good month. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like French, buddy. Oh, <laughs> so, 
So now let's go back to the uh, population growth chart. <clears throat> okay, so the idea of Lyndon LaRouche's very uh, his discoveries in the science of physical economy, his discoveries in the advancement of the increases in the productive powers of labor um, is really centered around this conception of, as I said, of mankind at the center of an economic system, the creative powers of mankind. And if you, once you put human beings at that, that's the, the focal point of your economic growth is breakthroughs and new discoveries of scientific principles. Um, that that's when you see an emergence of a rapid growth process. And so one of the things we've seen this part used in many of our presentations, but I think you know, it, it's key that you, know, you think about from the age of the, the, the time of uh, prior to the 15th century cultural classical renaissance in, in Italy, um, the numbers of population throughout the planet was uh, somewhere in the, the millions, hundreds, uh, the hundreds of millions. And once you had that, that breakthrough in terms of uh, new scientific principles of growth, which was the basis of the, the 15th century Renaissance, uh, you saw that the result of the Renaissance was the unleashing of the greatest rate of, of growth, of classical culture, uh, the principles of the advancement of the human being, the human condition of the human being. And this was done through development of infrastructure, of breakthroughs and, and creative discoveries around new scientific principles, uh, around, around the ideas of uh, advancing in machine tool design. Uh, which uh, the advancement of classical education uh, and the let's go to the to the next next one. And I want to just show there's a couple of pictures here because I had a chance to visit uh, an exhibit that was in Houston uh, in Galveston area for I me mean, not too long ago of uh, Da Vinci and if someone and made some really creative discoveries around uh, the breakthroughs and new machine tool technological design principles. What this is actually is it's a uh, it's a demo of Da Vinci's conception conception of a of a city of city building. And so this was one of the things they had at the. Uh, at the museum there in Galveston area. And, you know, it, one of the things that they're talking about is, in, in this demonstration is what they describe is how you have your city built together in terms of how your artistic centers, your cultural centers, your uh, areas of development around your machine tool design centers and your living quarters, and then also for sanitation, safety, you know, he was looking into how to make uh, cities more, more safe, more sanitized, uh, waste management, various other things that would actually improve the conditions of life of the uh, human beings. And obviously, this was a very important because you're talking about sanitation, waste management, you know, things that we might take for granted today, but were very important coming out of the, the dark age period, uh, because a lot of people were died due to various diseases. Um, and this is what this is what Vinci was looking at next to. Uh, this is just a, another example of uh, gear development, developing new gears. And this is um, another uh, one of the uh, demonstrations of of Da Vinci in terms of you know, he did things such as looking at the Archimedean screw, 
looking at various great relationship of uh, technological improvements and gear designs, uh, machine tool principles, uh, how you increase the productivity of society by making work more uh, more easily accessible, making the ability to to work uh, at rapid pace easier. So because you had the machines that's going to help to improve the, the labor conditions, the work conditions of the, the population. So this is some of the things that the venture was looking at, which I think is critical to understanding, you know, the idea of the Renaissance as an emergence of the power of new creative ideas and, and discoveries uh, done by human beings, by the human mind. So next one. So I wanted to, uh, not too pretty, but um, <laughs> just, just to uh, just kind of give a point of what this is, is it demonstrates what we were just talking, just showing here an example, which is this is LaRouche's uh, concept of the machine tool design principle and how and this is uh, one of the major concepts that he developed in his uh, So You Wish to Learn ec about economics. And when we're talking about discoveries of increasing in the science, the technological advancement of a population, you know, you do start, he starts here with the concept of uh, design based on a discovery of a, a scientific you know, scientific principle, but based on an idea, a breakthrough that occurred in the human mind. And, you know, that in order to increase the development of technological progress and machine tool design, it goes back to the second point of this uh, two axiomatic discoveries uh, around classical uh, composition and classical culture and education, that you have to have an education system it actually fosters economic or fosters creative growth. And you would, as you see, he's like putting the idea of the, the machine tool design principle as a, a function of the increased discoveries and breakthroughs of mankind, which is going to uh, continue to advance the productive powers of labor to increase uh, the growth of your society as you develop new, make new scientific discoveries, develop new principles, those ideas are going to propagate throughout your society and you are going to really see a, a development, a increase in rapid pace of development. And once you do that, then the population growth chart that you saw before, you know, you think about how from around the period of the the um, 15th century Renaissance period to today have taken off. Now, some of the anti-growth um, Malthusians would say, this is bad, you know, we're good at a few um, hundred million, probably less would have been better for us. Um, but now we got 700, I mean, now we have 7 billion. What are we going to do with that? You know, well, that's too many for us to carry out our oligarchical rules. So the policy is destruction, war, famine, anti-growth. And this is what this is what we have to put a stop to. And the, the commitment right now of Linda LaRouche and our movement is to fulfill the principles outlined in the very vision that at the center of economic growth and progress, which the growth paradigm is rapidly emerging, as I said, around the planet with the Belt and Road, with the vision of Lyndon LaRouche being fulfilled, that the only way that that vision is going to continue and to be fully realized is when we say we're putting an end to the anti-growth uh, British imperial policy once and for all. So there's a there's a number of 
other beautiful developments that are that are taking place right now um, just in terms of many conferences happening around the world committed to development of the Belt and Road Initiative and people can, can read about them. One of the things, uh, go go to the charts there. Those. Okay, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that's just been announced in terms of the growth paradigm and uh, the rapid pace of development of infrastructure projects around the Belt and Road, and after I've gone through what I have, you have a better sense of what these infrastructure projects really represent, um, how they transform society. They're not just, you know, build a bridge and pop it up here and there, but you have a transformation of the uh, growth of, of a society. And so uh, what this is, is the Chabahar Port, you can um, read about all of these various um, objects, but you know, LaRouche says you put these increases together in terms of understanding this type of economic growth from the standpoint of increases in, in, in economic platforms. <clears throat> but so the Chabahar Port is one of the uh, corridors that is listed in our Silk Road Becomes the World Land Bridge Report. And it's now been announced that the first phase of this uh, this report is going to be completed tomorrow. Uh, and, the, uh, and the president of Iran uh, is going to be addressing the, the completion of this port. So the, this is the International South North South Transport. Um, it is the Chabahar Port is the uh, Indian is the it's the port of Chabahar in Iran. So it goes from India to the port of uh, Chabahar to the port of Chabahar in Iran there. Uh, and so the phase here is uh, the next in Iran is uh, one of the phases in terms of that the Iranian president is going to going to announce as a completion so but keep going for a second this gives you this is the double hall port here but then you also have uh connections in terms of china to Duisburg, uh germany uh and various other connections and then uh the which are now uh, the ones that are going to be because that these are meetings in the 60 plus one talks. Um, the, these, the completion of these projects are fully underway right now and in, in rapid discussion, along with, as I said, you know, you have, at, as we speak right now, conferences going on in, um, in South America, in Africa and various other places, everybody is on the Belt and Road bandwagon. The whole world is, as we say in our our uh, song for the Schiller Institute, get on board, is getting on board the Belt and Road. Okay, next one. Okay, so this just gives you uh, at the top there, you see the economic, uh, Silk Road economic belt, and then this is the original uh, some of the original maritime Silk Road development, but people have seen this in our in our report for the Silk Road. But I wanted to just show this because I mean this is what's emerging right now. But this is nothing compared to what you're actually seeing. Um, you are, I mean, right now uh, the rapid pace of rail development in Africa. Uh, you know, I should make the point that. It's not being lost on the United States that China is the place to uh, be in terms of cooperation, economic development. Uh, there is, uh, for people who don't know, because I don't know if this has been in the news, but you busy talking about other needless stuff, is, <laughs> is that the um, mayor of Houston is now leading a delegation to China. Uh, to actually the, the places in China where 
I was just showing where where Helga LaRouche uh, near there, uh, one of the places that the mayor is leading a delegation of 80 business leaders, leaders this is Mayor Turner, you, you said, uh, 80 business leaders, uh, two, two city council members, and uh, one state representative. And uh, the, the commitment is very understood there. Like China is the place where if you want to see economic growth, uh, I think it was very much demonstrated. People haven't seen the video on the website of uh, West Virginia, the West Virginia governor. I uh, remember, as I said, when President Trump went to West Virginia, I mean, when went to China, uh, there were a number of trade deals signed. Uh, one of the things that came about is West Virginia was received something like $86 billion in uh, economic trade deals and cooperation with China and West Virginia governor said, you know, it's coming, Belt and Road, don't get behind this one, get on board. And, and if we're crying out loud, what's wrong with you? If you don't realize China, you better work with China. And um, so more people are starting to realize that I think we're getting more reports back. Um, it's gonna, you know, the fact of the matter is, what happens in terms of uh, the the trip being led, the delegation by Houston Mayor to China uh, to uh, Shenzhou, uh, Shenzhou the, the Shanghai, to various other places, which you go into China has a sister city. Uh, Houston has a sister city in China. Yes, do that. Yes. Yeah. Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Yeah. Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Yeah. Shenzhen. They, they already left. Uh-huh. Yeah. Are the business associates Yes. They're from the Houston area. Mm -hmm. In the Houston area. Yeah, it's in Shenzhen. Um, so. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good one. So you see it, too high. So this is what you have the crossing of Hong Kong to Tao Too High. This is what Helga was. This is the Shenzhen over there at the top. Uh, above Hong, uh, Hong Kong is uh, Shenzhen. Uh, that's our sister city. Um, they're also in Shanghai. Um, that's where they're going to, and another place I don't remember. Oh, Beijing. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> So, so um, it's, I think the, the key thing is we are in a moment of unstoppable growth and a beautiful, as the title of our, our conference in, in Germany, fulfilling uh, the dream of mankind. We are on the verge of doing that right now, and it's. I mean, I could, there's so much more that's rapidly emerging and taking place right now. But I think that people uh, can get an idea that the future lies in what our commitment to bringing the United States into this vision, to making sure that the President of the United States is free to fully fulfill the role of the United States in joining. The, going into the Belt and Road Initiative. And that means, again, we have to break this tool. We have to educate a lot of people. We have to break the cultural degeneracy that has been uh, inflicted on our population and our, on our society for far too long. And we have to give people a sense of what it truly means to be human, what a vision for mankind look, truly looks like. It's not you know, a society of dark age immersed in, in drug culture and Hollywood and uh, in rock and roll in the, the post-1963 uh, cultural paradigm that we've seen uh, after the death of President Kennedy. It's, it's something that is highly human and creative and is a product of realizing a shared principle of, of destiny, of, uh, of shared humanity. 
for mankind as Shijin thinks that. So um, you got some work to do, a lot of work to do. And I want to leave it at that and see if you have any questions or discussions. So. Mm -hmm. I do you want to show the video? No. Video of our friends in, in Yemen. So, um, well, no, because the key thing, I mean, the key thing about it is that you still have the war apparatus in Congress right now that they should be called out for. I mean, the fact is, if you have the coup of the operations that's protecting the whole Saudi attacks on Yemen, like Robert Miller, and he still is allowed to run rampant and push his criminal apparatus, then no, you're not going to solve that. But that's why this is important. Huh? The reason is to because the Saudis and the British see the Yemen want to grow economically, and that they think they see the Yemen represents a, a threat because it doesn't want to be a a tool of the Saudi-led uh, operations. So that's the. Oh, I mean, sure, there's always like this religious, you know, Wahhabism, you know, not wanting to go with the Saudi-led operations on religion, sorry, religious war, war policy on that. But the way that we're going to defeat this is to recognize that it's all a controlled apparatus, all of the division, the religious war, the policies that have been ongoing has been a control apparatus by the British Empire. So Saudis have no power. They're lackeys for the British. And if the U.S., you know, lets them get away with it because you have some um, criminals in our U.S. Congress, and I think, you know, this is, you look at the fact that you know, some, the people who are standing up, uh, who are calling for a stopping of the uh, of the attacks on Yemen right now, blockades from the uh, food uh, sources to be going into Yemen and 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 thus forth. Uh, people like Rand Paul, uh, you no, know, they they're facing major attacks. But the American people and people, leaders in Congress, have to say have to adopt the policy that was laid out by uh, the Shiller Institute uh, to stop the genocide in Yemen. And I mean, that's the key thing right now has to every single Congress member has to be, you know, has to be actually targeted and said, are you going to continue to allow this genocide? If you are, get the hell out of here. Because we're not going to take this anymore. Because if you see if they're willing to allow it for any nation, you know, what are they going to do the United States, they'll throw you into the scrap heap too. Don't think you're safe. Safety right now lies in saying we're going to actually go with the economic recovery program of Lyndon LaRouche, joining with the Belt and Road Initiative, uniting the three powers of the world, which you know Russia, China, India, uh, Russia, China, the United States, and uh, so forth, has been a total threat to this imperial system. But it's unstoppable. Um, if, if the president didn't have to deal with, you know, the we're not supposed to be working with Russia and they can actually cooperate in the areas that need to be cooperated in, uh, such as defeating of ISIS, putting Saudi in their place, um, and then, look, we can cooperate on economic growth, but you're not going to continue to get away with, with this uh, murderous policy that we're carrying out. You know, stop being a fool of the British Empire and actually, you know, get some sense, get on board. So that's, I mean, that's that's what the reality is. I mean, there's no other option right now. Like two of those three pieces of the use of drugs, two of them show different things. One's to the fifth force itself. The other one, what's 
more like what I would have recommended, which is you know, from Beijing up to Kirk Guam, you know, not done the graph of the Golden Horse, but to the Europe, right? Uh, um, it was more like a northern route. Well, is that what they're actually doing? Or mm -hmm. what, what were the that, there was two different projects. Um, one of them was just showing the Chaba Harcourt, which the, the one that dipped at the Another bottom. One showed the okay. Yes, that uh, I think that was, huh? That's the rail connection. To, that is underway right now. That's actually in the in midst of discussion. Go ahead. There are 40 different, that's what I was saying. That, that picture doesn't even show, it only shows a small portion of the, the, I mean, it's just one connection from China to, to Germany, to Europe there, but I mean, I was saying that there's the rapid pace of development. We have, we actually need to do a new report uh, because there's been so much growth in terms of the rail systems and development in Africa. Uh, China has, uh, you know, they have over 21,000 plus miles of High speed rail system, all you know, and that it just alone. Well, it's supposed to go it's supposed to be high speed, so we're talking about 200, 260 kilometers or so. So, the ones inside China are the ones, the passenger line. Oh, the freight lines, the one that's going from Beijing over to the yeah, long one yeah, to Europe. Yeah. Out. Which is two weeks, which is a much shorter time because I think the ones before it was taking something like uh, 21 so plus the days. Canal. Right, so tw 21 to 30 days, and you're talking about the cut down to something like 14 days. That's pretty Fascinating there. <laughs> I just want to go back to um, the women's economics. You said one is capacity of the human beings to be created. Uh, or, you know, these infrastructure projects, I can break these. The second point, when you talked about creating uh, identity, um, hopefully, that um, it's really the basis on which you get the weight of the weight of development of the actual. Proving mankind is going to supply that power. Mm -hmm. And um, when Roosevelt did that in the war years, you have the, the second time the British Empire who thought they had the American spirit broken and they were wrecking it, that American spirit was brought back. And then you have the company for the time with the freedom that comes in after the war to crush this ability. And John and I were just up in uh, Austin. We had, when we built this whole cultural freedom operation off of studies of shell shock in World War One, mm -hmm. we were standing and organizing. Mm -hmm. And um, a young woman comes up on the way in. She's she just comes out. And she was in the military station in Iraq. And then we were talking about how the first time in 16 years now we got the first bombings of the Saudi. I mean, the you know, back in, first bombing of the drum field in Iraq. And yeah, so mm -hmm. the laboratories and the fields. But anyway, there's a, a, a move and a policy. And what we were discussing that is using, you know, back in the spring, everybody's heard a, uh, a dumpster, when an empty dumpster is shot that dumpster or something heavy bangs into that metal. This shot went off about a block, half a block away. And this woman just battered. And she was really blocked. She had this cultural reality mm -hmm. that she lived with probably for a number of years. And you think about that kind of effect, and you see our networks in, in Yemen actually reading the highest concept of win under this kind of situation. It's a real fight mm -hmm. going through the mind. When you, yeah. you look at this kind of effect, what, it, what came out of this uh, cultural freedom is that it's all this Congress um, is called freedom. It, it caused a number of psychological shocks. It can be sort of in the shifting of uh, culture, whatever. So you have people like good people who come up and they're hanging on desperately to a belief that, you know, they, they want, you know, one person just 
the point about if we go back to morality, if we go back to this, if there's no basis to actually deliver, and they may think to hang on to that notion for psychological desperately that you can't really get in, I won't hear you. The rate of the way that you experience people actually taking that view of importance, this is what we're saying, you watch the literature, you watch the literature program, how you deliver, mm -hmm. and share your knowledge with the development. The trick is to the other position, why we've got to get the support out of the development. We're in a position right now to break them. And um, if you look at, in that sense, here you had a nation designed this kind of psychological weapon operation as policy. That's what a world of represents. You know, we put this title on that this guy is this kind of assassin. Well, we're not, we're not playing games. This is a video life in the fight. And yep. when you look at this report, you can now actually deliver to the population of the office. You don't need everybody to do this kind of report. I just like to reinforce that. One was the plug in terms of reading the report, getting it out, moving other people to get the other thing that puts it off, and then secondly, applying themselves to organize the And the new thing, the new thing is that. Yep. Absolutely. And I, I just uh, encourage people there's, you should not, anybody who is not going to our website is not in a position to fight like they need to be fighting. So to be on uh, the activities of the LaRouche PAC website, the Chiller we Institute website, various, uh, uh, and I think, you know, what one thing that is, is made very clear is, you know, the beautiful vision that was laid out and the role that Helga laid out in terms of the historic connection between uh, the 15 to the five thousand year history, the Confucian uh, history of China to the classical renaissance and uh, the ideas of liveness and the ideas of the renaissance that is, is, is now truly being fulfilled that you know this was against what Leibniz laid out against religious warfare and all of this but there is a common principle that unites all of mankind and that you know, whether it's the, the principles of agape in Christianity or the ideas of Confucianism, the, you know, it's all a love for mankind, for the development of mankind. So I, I just wanted to say that because uh, she lays it out very beautiful, beautifully in her speech to the conference, which you can find uh, on the website, on the, uh, you can find on the LaRouche Pack website uh, in terms of so this gives you an idea of you know, this conference. We have to, as, as Ron just said, you know, it's very clear that we have emerged on something that's completely unstoppable. But it can't be stopped if we choose not to fight and to say, okay, we're just gonna sort of watch, be spectators and sit back and get our popcorn and watch the fight and say, you know, who's gonna win? Is it gonna be the Mueller crowd versus Trump, because that's not what you're really dealing with. You're dealing with the fight of those in favor of the growth of mankind uh, and the economic emergence of a uh, new renaissance, a new paradigm, versus those who want to see that completely destroyed. So this is not a time to sit back and wait. And I think, you know, what we saw in, uh, in the recent period, where we're continuing to see the people are looking for leadership, and Lyndon LaRouche and his movement is providing that leadership. Um, and the world recognizes that the American people have to be brought into recognizing that more fully because that's their future. So I think I want to stop there because uh, we can have a further discussion later, but that you before people take off want them this, this video. Uh, by our friends in Yemen, in about 13 minutes or so. And we will post it in the, the link. Yes, and we will post the, the link in the description so those who are watching can see.